Greetings, Steve here. Work on the West Green. Today I just want to show you my way of weathering wagons. Um, I use a bit of dry brushing and I'm also going to use an airbrush. Um, some people just bright dry brush. There's my clock. It's lovely, isn't it? Hey, anyway. Um, some people use just an airbrush. Some people use... Um, dry brushing, some use powders, some use all three. Well, I'm going to use two. Uh, I've done three already. Um, and what I did was I, I used the airbrush first to tone down the wagon and also show uh, show a dirty underframe. Uh, and I've done that, but I've just, um, I've, so about three I've done. I mean, I saw when I used a, um, a dry brush technique. Here's a couple I've just done. I've just done these now. These were pristine, oh, sorry, Lionheart wagons. Here they go. Now, these aren't heavily weathered because looking at photos of um, goods trains in the 60s, I noticed that some were really, really <coughs> battered and others looked pretty good. Here's a, look, here's a photo. I've got this, this is on my, I uh, don't know where it is. See, look at that one. I mean, it's a bit manky. Look at this. You can see that it's all buckled. But I've just tried to, um, it's on a preserved railway somewhere. But you can see there's not much weathering on it. Um, oh, that's that's not one of mine. That, that's a, uh, I don't know who that one is. Oh, look at that one. And that one. Oh, these are my brake bands. I've weathered those. Okay, this is one of the three I've done, oh, the previous ones I did. There's one of them. And there you can see all three and how they're different. As you can see, this one in particular is quite heavily weathered. So I didn't want to do that on the next three. So these are the two I've just done. And all I've done is used, using a few photographs, uh, a few manky brushes, don't use anything good. Look, these are cheap and nasty. Probably cost me about a dollar, 20p, whatever. A few of those, got some mineral terps to clean the brushes up in. I'm using a few paints, that's tank grey, rust, uh, that's brick red, number 70. This is uh, called lining, orange lining. Got a few, but I've just basically used three. <coughs> the other thing you can do after you put it on, and I, I sort of blend them, sorry, I blend them all in, is using a brush like that, sometimes I'll just dip it dip it in the uh, thinners, dry it off a bit, and then just, it just softens the edges. So I'm going to have, a, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do one side of the next one, um, and the reason is because I can't hold the wagon paint and film at the same time. But then after I've done these, I'm going to go outside and I'm going to do a bit of airbrushing to tone them down. And what I'm going to do, instead of using the thinners, I'm going to use this gudgy stuff in here because it's just going to blend in. It's going to be, look, it'll, I think it'll look good. I've done it before and it should look pretty good. Look at this, one Lionheart O-Gauge wagon, pristine. Shall I put it back in the box? Cost me £36 each, these. Beautiful wagons. But, you know, let's face it, they look plastic. Because uh, they are plastic, but... And to see 12 of those going along, it doesn't do it for me. It's got to be look real. So I'm going to have a go. I'm going to start off with Mankey Brush number one. Look at it. I don't know what it is. It's something you get from a model shop. It's not a... I mean, they're cheap and nasty. I mean, I wouldn't paint anything decent with something you buy from a model shop because they don't sell but decent brushes. You know, it's not a sable, not Windsor and Newton. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start off with a bit of this uh, tank grey. So I've got some on. I won't video all this for you, but I'll show you how you do it. I'll just do one side, I think. Or one panel, 
you can get the general idea. Otherwise, I'm just going to bore you to. If you have too much on. Just take a bit off. And as I said, you can always um, use a rag. Just get a bit of a. Might swap. How about we put some of the rust on? Probably plenty too much. Probably too much, right? Now what I might do, I've just got a bit on the end. I'm just going to try and spot someone like rust spots. Maybe a few rust lines. Oh dear. How about a bit of orange? It all blends in well anyway. And once you've, once you've left it to dry for a little while, you can sort of go over it with a broad brush. Even with just a bit of thin, it's just because it softens up the paint a bit. Is my method perfect? I don't think so. Does it have to be? You know, there's more than one way to do it. You know, you just got to have a go. I don't know if I get £36 from if I sell them. No, someone might because, uh, you know, some people, they can build stuff that they can't paint. Other people can do all sorts of stuff. Some buggers are just about good at everything, can't they? Not me. And just sort of even a bit of a rub over it. Um, Maybe a bit, maybe a bit more of this uh, tank grey. God, it's thick this paint. I haven't really thinned it much. You know, don't press too hard on the brush. I'm gonna. I might put a. You know, I go to bed tonight uh, at night, and I, I start dreaming of what rust looks like. You know, I have these pictures of. Uh, what things really look like. It's all in my head. Okay, so I've done one side. I haven't done that. I've got to do the other three sides, but <clears throat> you get the idea. So what I'm going to do now, using this brush, um, I'm just going to put a bit of thinners on it. Oh, not thinners. Look at that. Lovely terps. Just, just dry it off a bit, and then Probably too much on it. Sort of mixes the paints up a bit. Because this paint's not dry. So. Oh, look, this is my. Look, this is the way I do it. Is it right? I don't know. What I don't want is 12 wagons all the same. I'm all different. Now, to me. That looks all right. So I'm going to continue now, um, painting the other side, then I'm going to go and do the airbrushing. But <clears throat> what I was going to say was, the first ones I did, I worked on the premise that a wagon would come out brand new. It'd look pretty Mickey Mouse, it'd come out. The works, black sole bar, you know, grey paint, wonderful. After a couple of trips down from the Nottingham coalfields to London, um, especially, you know, with a wet weather, it would look pretty weathered without probably rust uh, and then after a while you know it would get kicked around paint flicked off you know dents so i worked on the premise of a new wagon weather it first oh sorry dull it down and then weather it but this time i've actually done it different i thought i'm going to take the wagon uh put this on first then put the weather in because i think when i dull it down it will tie everything in it will just tie it all together that's the theory. See so how we go. So here we are in the in the garage. I've got an Art Logic uh, dual piston compressor. I've got a couple of airbrushes. I've got a Pash VL which I don't use all that much. 
I'm using my trusty Pash H, right? And it's one of the best brushes on the market. Uh, it's a uh, single action, means press down for air, and you adjust this nozzle here for paint flow. And it's an external mix. Easy to pull apart, easy to get parts for, simple. In fact, uh, a lot of professional painters um, who paint locomotives say that they've tried a lot of brushes, but I'll always come back to the Pash H. It is a good brush. Um, <clears throat> I've just mixed up the paint. This tank grey was really thick. I use a Dremel and I made this up. Uh, it's a little brass. That seems to be good for mixing paint. Here's my uh, thinners. Lovely, isn't they? Look at that. God knows what concoction that is. But I think that will go well because I want to make it look dirty and there's, there's browns and there's all sorts of crap in that. So I'm going to mix up some paint. Okay, so what I've done, this is brick red. That's tank grey. I put some brick red and tank grey in this beaker and then added some of this mineral turps. Look at it. Lovely, isn't it, eh? Almost good enough to drink. Anyway, I mix it up and it's uh, it's still a bit thick, I think. I just don't see it. I'm not going to use proper thinners because the result I'm trying to get is a mucky look. And uh, what's better than muck? Don't worry about the airbrush because these things, you can strip this down in two minutes and clean it up. And what I do, when I've finished, I blow, thin, I blow enamel thinners. And the other thing I use... I don't buy for enamel paint. I'm not going to buy. I'm not going to buy uh, proprietary thinners. But there's nothing wrong with Digger's enamel. It's cheap compared with the other stuff. And if you speak to any professional model makers, they'll all tell you to just use enamel thinners from a DIY store if you're in Britain or a hardware store if you're here. So I'll put some in the airbrush and see it. Or I'll, or I'll do a bit of a test on the paper at the back. I've just tested it. There's, uh, I've got paint in the colour cup. I just did a two, few test sprays. I only want it really thin. I've dialed up about 20 psi in the compressor. It's not critical, but that's not bad. So I've got to do this on one side, so I'm going to show you. Now I do it upside down because the track grime would actually come up from the rails, not down, wouldn't it? So that's the way I do it. And you can see it changing. You can even do a bit on the bottom of the uh, wagon. See the buffer beam and the buffers. You can even look, you can even do the wheels. So I'm going to do this side. Now it's all in the treads of the wheels, but it doesn't matter. A bit of thinners will get that off. Very easy. It's certainly easier than brush painting this stuff on, I tell you. So look, I've done one, I'll go outside. Lovely raining here in Sydney. You can see, you can see how it's come up. I'm quite pleased with it. it. It looks pretty good. That's just the under frame. I've got to do the body. I'll do all the rest of these first and come back to that. Now, I've done all three. I've got, this is the last of my paint in there. So it doesn't matter because I'm going to go over this with a bit of black, but I might as well just go over it. Don't be scared to be creative because there's no right way. You know, it's been said before by someone else, not me, but there's the right way, there's the wrong way, and then there's the railway. <laughs> All right, and then there's Steve's way. Look, just missed it on. Now, I'm not going to do any more with that. In the bottom of my jar here, 
I've got this grimy muck. I don't know if you can see it. But that's okay, because what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to mix up some tank grey. Uh, this will go with it. And it's going to create this atmospheric shitey grime, I suppose. And um, I'm just going to dust it on. So I'm, not, I'm really not painting. I'm actually misting it on. Uh, obviously, I wouldn't use this stuff if I was painting properly, but I'm not. Okay, what I've done, <clears throat> I've got, I've, uh, I've just done one. Why? I wanted to make sure it works before I show you. <laughs> that was a bin the bin. Uh, okay, I'll get show, so I'll show you. Here is one I've just done. Right? Now, compare it with, let's have a look. Well, I've done the underframes on both of this, but you can see. And you can see, oh, well, I think so. I think it's tied, it's tied it all in together. So that one's done. So I'm going to do this one. It's going to be a bit difficult because, as I said, if I had someone holding the camera, where's my wife when I want to? No, I shouldn't say that. Okay, so you can see how it's coming out. So, as I said, I've got plenty of this. So you can see, you can see how it's changing. I just do one side and the top. You don't have to go right close. I'm really not painting. I'll also show you a bit about the airbrush because I know there's blokes who don't get airbrushes. And I know there's blokes who think the best ones are most expensive. Well, no, it's not. The best ones are the right one for the job. And some airbrushes brushes are made for inks and stuff. But this is... These are bulletproof. These are like the Hornby double O of uh, airbrushes. And you can get spare parts and they're American. Because I'm sick of buying stuff made in what I call the lesser, lesser part of Asia. Cheap crap. And you can see, you can see, this is all going to get loads in it anyway. I'm going to do a side for you now. So here goes. So just miss, don't start on the job, go off. And you'll see it starts it changing. It's probably enough. You don't have to do, you don't, less is more probably. It's just like it's falling out of the sky. I've actually thought I should, get, I should make a weathering machine. It's a piece of track with a couple of airbrushes. You load it up, you start it going, and you run your train through. Sounds stupid, I know, but let's face it, that's how weathering happens, isn't it? So you can see, notice how the top lip here is, is dulling down. Just missed it on. As I said, this is pretty thin mix. If you've never used an airbrush, you're missing out. Plus, God, they're good fun. What can I paint now? The car? The dog? Let's have a butcher's. It never quite looks right through the camera, it looks different. Might give that one a bit more. So, here we go. I've had this brush. I bought this brush in 1995. Cost me, I don't know, it cost me about $80 then, but uh, $90 I think, but they're great brushes. I've been thinking of buying a gravity feed one. But again, sometimes you read stuff up and you think, God, you know. That one's done. So let's compare. So here's one. And you can see this rust is very bright. But obviously when I put this grey on it, it's going to tone down. But there's one I've done. 
this is the last one so let's put that down there I'll do the outside first I've still got plenty of paint left very economical I've not used acrylics although to be honest I may, maybe I've just got this mindset that somehow uh, oil based paints are better but I'm I'm actually going to start using acrylics plus for railway colours because you can't get them here in Australia as oils but you can they will send 450 mil tinlets of, a, of a rail match acrylic because I've checked with Gauge Master now look at the top see how it's already dulled down so that bright orange is sort of blended in Don't forget, if you put too much on, you can't take it off. So, you know the old saying, measure twice, cut once. Do you know how many times I've measured once and cut twice? <laughs> Come on, own up to it. Look at that. I've never, I haven't had so much fun for ages. I feel pretty creative. Notice a distance. I'm a fair distance. If you're painting, you'd, the paint, well, you'd have a bit of thicker consistency, but you'd open up the valve, you'd lay the paint on, and then a bit wet, but keep it moving. You can spot them like that, but don't leave it on too long, because you'll get a paint run. See, look, before your very eyes, maybe you want to get a bit of tone down the transfers. And of course, around the doors, they would probably get pretty grimy because that's where all the coal and crap come out, isn't it? It would be uh, not very good of me or remiss of me if I didn't show you how to clean it up. So what I've done, I've cleaned up the jar but it's, and i put it back in there because I can use that. Because it, it really builds up this amalgam of a paint. For weather, I mean, I wouldn't do it for everything else, but for weathering, it's good. So what I've done is I've filled this up with common or garden turpentine. And then just, I'm blowing all the crap out. You can use thinners. Now I'm going to show you what I'm going to do. I'm going to pull this apart. There's a little grub screw and uh, I'll show you. So here's my brush. I've finished. That's a colour cup. I use that. It comes with bottles but uh, it comes with these but I prefer the colour cup. You can mix paint up in it. Um, and you can see, oh you should be able to see, there's a grub screw, there's a little grub screw there, this whole thing comes out, this, the, uh, the vent and this, now there's, it comes with three sets of these, you can change these as a, uh, I think it's a one, three and a five, five is the biggest one, you use the smaller ones for finer stuff like inks, but five I use. Took me about 30 seconds to pull those out. So this, if I want, and that, the cone and and this end, I'm just going to put it in some, uh, I can put it in here, put a bit of thinner, swirl it all around, clean it. And it's all done. That's why I like pash, that's why I like these brushes. They're the simplest brushes to clean and unclog. They really are. Uh, and the other thing is with a single action, and I'm not very good at a double action. The problem is with a double action, you press down for air, but then you pull back for paint. It's so easy to press down for air and pull back too hard. So, but that's, it's like an anything else, it's just experience. So here's the uh, finished result. I've got six wagons, three I did the other day, and three I did this morning. And I've mixed them all up. 
life okay that's one I did today this is one this I did yesterday uh, this is the one where I've put the weathering powders on afterwards also there's less weathering on that one because I want these to mix uh, there's uh, oh so that's uh, one I did yesterday and here's, here's another one which I did yesterday these are of the first batch here's the, the other two of the ones I've done today I think they're pretty good well, I'm happy with them anyway um, yeah so I've done that and guess what I did guess what I did my Pache airbrush you know that little grub screw I've gone and lost, what, lost it didn't I anyway it doesn't matter I just bought another I bought, you can buy six online so uh, from Hobby Tools Australia which I've just done so it's all good um, they're going to have loads putting them um, actually I won't put loads in all of them but what I've, I've got some coal and I'll crush up the dust I think if I put some varnish inside matte varnish and then just sprinkle the dust on it um, it will look good anyway thanks for watching leave some comments whatever you think as I said there's more than one way to weather wagons there's loads of ways but uh, how good do they look they look they certainly look better certainly look much better than straight out of the box